Hey guys, how's it going? Hey, uh, uh, as you can see, I'm in my office again. It's a little earlier. I usually do these on Saturday, but I thought I'd get this one uh, done early, and uh, uh, I'm excited about it. Uh, we are in uh, still in Matthew chapter 7, and uh, we talked about last week, uh, enter through the narrow gate, and uh, uh, to me, and this is kind of a tongue-in-cheek kind of thing you know we're at the end of the of the Sermon on the Mount and uh, I, I kind of I've been looking at these and and Jesus the the last parts of these are are, are four warnings you know the first one is enter by the narrow gate because broad is the way to destruction narrow is the way to life and and all this and and I got to kind of thinking about it these are uh, kind of uh, Jesus's closings <laughs> if you were you know so that kind of gives us pastors a justification on on multiple closings so today if you want to if you want to count it like that uh he's going to talk he's, this is closing number two uh so uh, starting in verse 15 he says uh, beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing but inwardly are ravenous wolves you will recognize them by their fruits are grapes gathered from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? So every healthy tree bears good fruit, but the diseased tree bears bad fruit. A healthy tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a diseased tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus you will recognize them by their fruits. So we're through verse 20. Uh, I thought it was uh, I thought it was interesting uh, how he uh, how he's kind of summing up everything here, and this one he's talking about he's uh, remember he's who remember who his audience is he's been talking to uh, disciples of his, uh, and these disciples you know we talked about this at the very first disciples are people that are uh, are following him uh, now we're, the ones he's calling. Uh, they're his disciples, but they're also the the apostles. He's they've gone. Uh, uh, he's personally called them to a a separate, uh, as you were, uh, mission. You know, missionaries uh, to go out. But uh, right now, they're uh, disciples. The disciples are the ones that have that have really chosen to follow him. He's also got some folks in the crowd that haven't really decided yet whether they're hundred percent in. And actually, some of the disciples, as we get into this, you'll see them start to uh, hear about them kind of falling off and, and falling away. So they're not 100% in right now that they're, they are disciples. You know, I think they're along for the, uh, I think them and the most of the crowds are just along for the ride, for the show. And then, of course, we have, the, we have some Pharisees and some, uh, and some scribes in there that are trying to catch Jesus in something, something that he's saying, something that he's doing to to uh, to uh, get him in trouble and say so uh, uh, and I think he's saying uh, he's you know a lot of this he's been talking directly to his disciples about kingdom living and we've like I said I'm kind of reiterating a lot of this but I want to get it get it in you uh, I want you to get it into your spirit that that uh, this sermon is is awesome I mean uh, it tells us exactly what kingdom life is is here on earth and what it will be what we need to what we need to uh, be thinking about he came to perfect the law he, he came to bring all this stuff to pass and it's and can you just imagine the people there not even realizing what they are seeing and hearing at this point so he's going closing number two beware of false prophets uh now i have a i have a esv on a, i've been using that translation and this is a key word. So what it does is it uh, it gives the original meaning in the Greek, in the in the Hebrew, in the Old Testament, the Greek, in the New Testament, and the word in mine, that false prophets, is underlined. And now everybody I've been I've been looking at online, the the different preachers I watch, and and sometimes I'll type and I type in Matthew. It's a great resource. I type in the scripture reference, and you will get literally hundreds of different 
preachers preaching on this specific topic. And uh, I listened to to several. I've listened to some that I don't totally agree with. You need to uh, you need to have some discernment there. Don't just listen to anybody. I think this falls into that category. Uh, but the ones that I've been talking, listening to that I really agree with and, and listen to and, and uh, like uh, use them to study by as a resource, they're trying to, they're kind of treating this false prophets as a uh, kind of a catch all. They're talking about uh, uh, false teachers, prophets are kind of lumping them in. And I'm not, and I'm not trying to invalidate that, uh, but I want to just take, because like I said, this uh, false prophets, that's a specific, specific word. Uh, it's uh, pseudo, pseudo, uh, drop I, Prophetes, or prof, prophet, the pseudo prophet, basically, and pseudo meaning false. You know that's the Greek word for it, and it says pretend foreteller or religious imposter. And I think you can kind of, you might can, you might can find the argument or the, or the, you can that encompasses teachers, but actually, false teacher is a separate word. It's also pseudo, but it's a. Uh, uh, didas kalos, didas kalos, that's false pseudo teacher. Uh, and that's a propagator of erroneous Christian doctrine. So I, I know, we know that, that Jesus didn't say anything or do anything that didn't have meaning, that didn't, wasn't a teaching moment, didn't, didn't have significance. And so I think he's saying here, like I said, I'm not trying to invalidate when they're, when these other preachers that are kind of lumping uh, prophets, teachers, everything, and we are to watch out for false teachers as well as false prophets. But I think Jesus is telling us here specifically for false prophets. Now, why is he talking about prophets? Well, I think back in their day, as well as ours, there were a lot of people going around, and he may have been even referring to the uh, the, the Pharisees as false prophets because. Uh, everything's grand and glory, even when, uh, you know, the false prophets in the, uh, in the Old Testament, if you read some of those stories, they were, uh, uh, when, uh, when God told the prophet to tell the, you know, tell the Jewish people, Hey, I'm fixing to, I'm fixing to rain down wrath on you. You better get ready. There were a lot of prophets going around saying, no, everything's fine. Don't worry about it. You're in a, you're in great shape. You're, you're doing good. You're, uh, don't you worry about this. And then, and then that's why the other prophets were so un, unpopular and a lot, and they were threatened with an inch of their lives because they were talking, they were telling stuff that people didn't want to hear. They were telling the truth. They were telling what God told them. That's what a prophet is. That's a, uh, foretell that's a that's a spokesperson for God you know in the Old Testament they did not have the word that we have and so God spoke to his people through the prophets and they had to they had to, and a lot of times they were scared to speak what God told them because they knew that they weren't gonna like it and so uh, you know Jeremiah Isaiah you know Jonah didn't want to you know he ran from God and we all know what happened there. He was swallowed by a big fish and taken back to Nineveh and threw up on the on the uh, on the shore and ended up leading that entire uh, city to the Lord. But uh, so we have to be uh, we have to be uh, cognizant that there are people out there that aren't that aren't truly speaking goodness and speaking uh, God's words to us. Uh, there was a there was a, a while back I had a we had a person that uh, that took my wife aside. I'm not going to name any names. I'm not going to give any details, but took my wife aside in a very very low point in her life, and just told her that she had a word from God, and just berated her for her for stuff that she was doing, and just made my wife feel awful, and. That was not from God. Now, I'm not saying that God is not going to, if you're doing something wrong, God wants to correct that. And through the Holy Spirit, we have the Holy Spirit now. But somebody just coming up to you and saying, hey, I've got a word from God for you. 
Yeah. You need to you need to do this, this, and this, or you're not doing this, this, and this, or uh, I don't feel like God. That's that's what God would do, because first of all, it's gonna it's gonna resonate with your spirit. He's already gonna be dealing with you, Holy through the Holy Spirit with that. If you're called to the mission field, I feel like you would already be have that on your heart that that you would already be going. Uh, I mean. Uh, have a mind going that way it's not somebody's not going to come out of a uh, uh, come at you from from totally uh, out in the blue and say hey God told me you're supposed to go to Africa and be a missionary you need to sell everything you got pack up your kids and go and if you don't then you're out of the will of God I, I don't I don't see that I don't I would I would take that with several grains of salt and uh I would get on my face before I wouldn't tell them to their fate. You need to shut up and get out of my face. But I would truly pray about that and seek the Lord on that. And let. And first of all, if you are truly living uh, spirit-filled, I, I believe totally uh, with all my heart that that's, gonna, that's either going to resonate with your spirit or you're going to feel a check. You're going to say, okay, God, where did that come from? Because I, I have not, you have not been leading me that. Okay, first of all, and then the second, the in that same sentence, he said, Beware of false prophets, comma, who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. Now, that's interesting that they, that he says it that way because they're going to come to you as a friend. They're going to come to you as somebody that, that they're professing that they are a, they're a prophet of the Lord, that they speak on his behalf. But inwardly, they don't care anything about you. They want they they're trying to get their way, basically. They're ravenous wolf. They they don't they don't care what they say does to you. Uh, if it tears you apart, if it doesn't, they they are just speaking out of the side of their head, uh, and and you're going to be able to tell that. Now uh, he he goes on to tell you you're going to be able to tell a false prophet by their fruits by their how their character because I don't care how many wolves dress up in sheep's clothing they're still wolves aren't they so Jesus uses nature isn't that an awesome awesome analogy there he uses nature and he uses a couple of things that were very prevalent in in the ancient world he said uh, you recognize them by their fruits period you 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 know what they do their character if you see them, if they're somebody in the church and they they are going around telling other other people stuff that's not resonating with them, uh, uh, or that's not uh, you, it's just not not right. They're they're causing division in the church. They're stirring up more stuff than they are uh, trying to exhort and lift up people. And so you're gonna you're gonna see that. And he said, "Are grapes gathered from thorn bushes?" Are figs from thistles? Now, grapes and figs; those were big things. They they go up to the, they go through the through the vineyards and pick the grapes and 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 eat them right off the vine, or they, or they pick the figs off the tree. Now, how many times? I don't know if you've ever picked uh, grape grapes or figs, but we've we've had houses that have that have had grape vines in the backyard, and there's nothing on those that if you went to pick a grape, it's gonna it's gonna draw blood, and so I think. I think that's a it's a rather clever analogy. Of course, the Lord is is very clever, and He says, "Grapes from a thorn bush, good from something evil." You're not going to pick something good that has the has the uh, propensity to draw blood to to prick you. Okay, that's what a false prophet's going to do. He's going to bring you something good, but there's it's going to be uh, there's going to be evil intent behind it, and it's going to prick you. And you will you will know that if you're truly living in the spirit. Now, if you're uh, seeking, uh, if you're one of these that's seeking answers, you you are you're going through trials and tribulations, and and uh, I hope I hope you're not. But but seek seek truth uh, through the Holy Spirit. I've been seeing these. Uh, they used to be prevalent back in the 80s and 90s, and I kind of I've seen a little bit of a resurgence. Uh, here lately these commercials for the psychic hotlines and that is just so ridiculous some of them want like ten dollars a minute to talk to these idiots and I'm I'm telling you right now 
Those are false prophets, definite. They ain't got nothing to do with God. They don't even profess to do anything with God, fortunately. But they, you are not going to find answers through them. They're not going to tell you anything. They are con artists. And if you are seeking truth uh, through one of those people, then you're going to fall for anything anybody tells you especially around what's going on now. Anything that's coming out of our government, anything that's coming out of our neighbors, anything that's coming out of our family, uh, you, you need to be, have discernment through the Spirit. You need, to be, you need to seek the Lord on this because there are so many things coming at us right now, so much uncertainty. We, are, uh, uh, we keep hearing the resurgence of, of COVID-19 and here at school, we don't even know, you know, we're gearing up to start our fall semester, but uh, my wife just told me she's got a big meeting Monday to find out with all the, you know, Governor Abbott has kind of shut Texas down again, kind of going back the other way. So we don't even know if we're going to be able to have face-to-face -face classes. Uh, you know, like I told y'all before, the precedent has been set and everything's been set up that uh, we they may be teaching we may be teaching from home, and so uh, and locked down again. You know we got a vacation coming up and we are so we have not even planned anything because we don't even know if we'll be able to go anywhere or do anything. So that's just kind of up in the air and vacations and things like that. That those are fine. Those those are those are not big things but it's the lie that's perpetuated and I feel like this is a this is a all from Satan I don't think that there's a big conspiracy out there nothing's going on that Satan didn't drop in the hearts of men in the first place and so this stuff is going on uh, is uh, is all a plan from Satan I think he's testing the waters and testing the church and so far the church has failed uh, I'm gonna tell you that right now we as the church have failed uh, because we are supposed to be living uh, by the blood of the Lamb. And not that we're supposed to be flaunting, uh, you know, Paul said that he became everything to everyone. And I'm not telling you, you need to be rebellious. If you get that rebellious spirit, then that's not why you're, that's why you're not wearing a mask and doing all this stuff. I'm not telling you, don't go that road. But we do have freedom. We do have freedom through Christ Jesus, and we have freedom freedom that that uh, that Jesus provided. I'm telling you, Jesus provided that freedom for us here in America. Now He provided it through uh, a lot our military and uh, and our people that that were that were people that were for the people. Now it's such a me mentality anymore. Everybody's offended at everything that. It's no longer a uh, government by the people for the people. It's a government by me for me. What can I get out of it, and how can I make you agree with me? And that's not that's not Christ Jesus. Jesus did the redemptive work on the cross, but he gave us the choice whether to accept it or not. To accept it, not to do it. Our, our future was to die that horrible death. Jesus did it for us. So we don't have to. And now we need to live according to he's our, to what he's already done. He already knows our future. He knows where this is going. He knows where it's been. Uh, he's already been there, done that. that. To me, that's so comforting. I pray every morning, Lord, thank you for being on the throne, for being our anchor, our lighthouse that we can grab a hold of because things are getting dark. Things are getting darker. This world, world, not just America. I'm thinking the world is getting, is getting darker and crazier. If you'd have said, if you'd have asked anybody, six months ago, about all the things that's happening now, they, they would have thought that you'd watch some crazy sci-fi movie, and were just reciting the, the what the characters did in that. We didn't. We, I would have never thought we'd be living. Uh, this nightmare right now and and you know I that's where I'm at I'm uh, I'm living by faith now do I expect Jesus to keep me from ever getting sick that's one of the one of the 
one of the things he talks about, by his stripes we are healed. But the thing is, if I did get sick, does that mean that Jesus failed me? No. Like I said, like I've told y'all before, just like Paul, I'm trying to live my life according to what Paul said in Philippians 1.21. He said, but as for me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. If I were to contract COVID-19 and my everything shut down and I were to die, guess what? I know where I'm going. I know where I'm going. I am secure in the fact that Jesus will heal me through taking taking me home where there is no disease, where there is no death, where there is no sorrow, no tears. When? You know, come on, guys. I'm just telling you. No, nobody wants to go through pain and suffering here on earth. But uh, if we go through, you know, he's already told us if we go through pain and suffering for the cause of Christ, uh, then that's what he did. So get out there and talk about this. Tell others about Jesus. Tell them that if you truly feel and see that things are going the way of the of the the rapture happening, I'm not trying to predict anything like that, but you know, I think we can kind of see now how quickly this thing perpetuated globally and how things got shut down and I've asked y'all before, imagine uh, when when the rapture takes place and millions of people disappear worldwide, uh, the system's already in place now. I think in the next great, uh, you know, if we go through this again and states start shutting things down again, there's going to be a financial pandemic go around. Government's going to send out more stimulus. That's going to that's going to put even a greater stress on the financial situation, and all that does is set everything up for one world system, one world government. I mean, I don't know how you don't see that happening. And I'm not trying to be a doomsayer or anything like that. But if you if you read the word and you are living according to what what the word says, that's where we're headed. I mean, that that's that's the end game if you want to call it that. And so we need to we need to pay attention uh you know it's it's hard. I haven't been listening to news and stuff. I haven't I've been, I haven't been really on social media uh, a lot. You know, I'm trying to stay informed, but I don't want to believe the lies, the false prophets out there that are saying this 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 and this and I don't I don't want to get into any of that because it it affects my spirit. It makes me sad. It makes me it puts fear in me, and that's what that's what the devil wants. He wants fear. You know, fear doesn't come from God. We are secure in God. Fear is what the world wants you to do because you can be manipulated by fear. We've already seen it. You know, it wasn't a military force that came in and shut anything down. It was simple fear, and that's all it was. And that's where the devil is poking us. He's found us our our soft underbelly and he's just poking us and get and setting us up for for uh tribulation and uh i i can't make it any plainer than that and this scripture uh this passage is saying it's it said a healthy tree cannot bear bad fruit if you are uh if you know somebody that's given uh a bad prophecy that's trying to tell you something that you don't agree with then you need to flee from them. You need to separate yourself, because that that's bad fruit. A healthy tree is not gonna is not gonna produce bad fruit, whereas a diseased tree is not gonna pro produce good fruit. Uh, I have two. I have four trees in my backyard, but two fruit bearing trees. I have an apricot tree that is making a mess in my backyard. I have a pecan tree that's making a mess in my backyard, dropping over there. But guess what? I have not found any apricots underneath the pecan tree. The pecan tree physically cannot produce apricots. The apricot tree cannot physically produce pecans. It's in nature. That's the way they were they were created by the Lord. This is an apricot tree. It's not a hybrid apricot pecan apricot tree. It's not a hybrid ap apricot peach tree. It doesn't produce 
uh, every so often on one of its branches, an apple doesn't pop out. It's that's physically, naturally impossible. Same way with uh, it, with uh, with us. If we are, uh, if God has given us a word to speak to somebody, and you are uh, consider it a privilege, but consider it also an awesome responsibility, because if you have been chosen by the Lord to uh, to be His spokesperson and to give a word of faith or a word of encouragement to somebody, that's what it is. It's not a word of teardown or a word of condemnation. Uh, it's a word of encouragement, then then give it, but be certain that that's what it is. And I'm not saying to shirk back and say, well, God, I'm not sure about that. Sometimes we're supposed to step out in faith and then ask that person, does this, does this click with you? Does this resonate with what you... And if it's from God, that person is going to already feel that in their Holy Spirit, and they're going to say, you know what? I... I the Lord's been dealing with me for that. Thank you for that that confirmation. They may be waiting on a confirmation, okay? But what I'm talking about, what he's talking about here is beware of false prophets. Beware of people that are speaking into your lives things that aren't lining up. And that there's a bunch of that going around, okay? Uh, praise the Lord. Uh, love you guys. Uh, we're still kind of figuring out what we want to do with the Sunday school class if and when uh, you know I'm I'm down for doing some different different things I've got the Lord the the Lord's been uh, kind of putting some ideas in my head I'm gonna get with with uh, Pastor uh, McAdams and and we're gonna go through, through some things and kind of talk some things out and uh, see what kind of works but y'all stay tuned I'll keep you Set. I'm still trying to get stuff on YouTube. Bear with me on that. Right now, we're still on Facebook. But, uh, guys, I love you. Uh, next week, uh, read ahead. Go ahead. We're, we're finishing up uh, uh, the Sermon on the Mount. We'll be in uh, Jesus' My Term, closing number three, talking about uh, uh, the not everyone says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom. That's a tough one. But we'll talk about it then. Love you guys. Y'all have a wonderful day. And we'll see you Sunday.